of respected chairpersons and friends. And I thank the DICON uh, team and Dr. Banshi for this opportunity. And my topic I have covered today, that is uh, history, then physiology and metabolism, and um, insulin profile. So um, I hope I do justice for all the three topics in 20 minutes. And my, uh, your screen is visible, Dr. Sujata. Okay, okay, just you a can go. You can yeah. go full screen. Just a minute. Mm, it's on. My screen is still sharing. Yeah, your screen is visible, but uh, the slide, slides are in portrait uh, mode. Can yeah, you use yeah. full screen mode? Yeah, you need to go full screen. Just press F5 only. Yeah, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah, screen is visible. Yeah, now it is full screen. Go ahead, Dr. Sujata. I'm just click one click on the slide. Yes, it's moving. Oh, it's going further. Okay, I have no actual or potential conflict of interest. Going to the history and milestones. Uh, this year we are celebrating the first century of the world's first life-saving drug. Excuse and me, Dr. Sujata, your, your screen is not uh, visible full screen. It is, it is not visible full screen. Um, F full, full screen is not taking up, doctor, actually. Okay. Now? Yeah, now it is. Now it is. Go ahead. Okay. Is. So in 1552 BC, we uh, in the Egyptian dynasty, they discovered that there was frequent urination. In 250 BC, diabetes term was coined. In 1869, they discovered the islet of cells in the pancreas by Paul La Laringhans. In 1909, they termed the insula, insulin, which was from the Latin word. In 1920, and General Surgeon Frederick, he said to isolate the internal secretion of the pancreas to re really relieve the glycosuria. In 1921, so Banting and Charles was pro uh, provided and uh, space in University of Toronto to extract the insulin from cow and pig pancreas. In late 1921, Banting and Bellard conducted the first human test successfully. Early in 1922, the 14-year-old Lenore type 1 diabetes received the first insulin. That is why we are celebrating this centenary year. In late 22, they developed a method to optimize the quantity and purity of insulin. In 1923, an American patent was awarded. In 23 in November, the nonprofit Nordics Insulin Laboratory was set up. And this is the year that Banting and McLeod received the Nobel Prize. In 1925, 217 million insulins were distributed. In 37, this was very important which we are using now, protamine, a protein found in river trout that prolongs the effect of insulin was discovered. In 46, no Nordics developed an intermediate acting insulin, NPH, and they mixed with the short acting and named it as a premix insulin. 
In 53, no Nordics introduced lente insulin. In 1955, Dr. clarified the uh, composition and structure of the insulin. In 63, we had the first insulin pump. In 74, no Nordic named the monocomponent and highly purified animal insulin. Lily be began providing silver medals to the survivors of 10, 25 years of diabetes with insulin. In 78, recombinant DNA methods of making human insulin was originated. In 1980, first doses of recombinant human insulin were administered to the volunteers. 82, introduce the first human insulin of our DNA origin. In 85, no Nordics introduced the first insulin pen. 89, fixed ratio premix recombinant human insulins were discovered. In 96, we had insulin Lispro, though still it was under research. 99, first pre-filled disposable pen, insulin pen was discovered. 2000, first long-acting basal insulin analog, insulin gargin was researched. In 2006, rapid-acting inhaled insulin was developed by Pfizer. 2015, insulin glargin. 2015, we had approval of insulin degludec. No Nordics, no Nordics introduced faster insulin as part. In 2016, we had concentrated insulin and ultra rapid insulin. This was the history and timeline. As a pediatrician, see, I'm happy that a marasmic Leonard who became so healthy after receiving the insulin, Banting and Macleod got the Nobel Prize uh, for their work of uh, discovery of insulin. Now going to the physiology and metabolism. Insulin is from a Latin word, insula is a peptide hormone produced by beta cells. The structure of insulin, it has got A and B amino acid chains. Both are linked by the disulfide bridges. And the third one bridge is in the A chain itself. Here we are showing the alpha cell, beta cell, and the delta cell in the pancreas. Beta cell produces pro-insulin, insulin, and C-peptide, insulin and C-peptide are produced together, secreted together. In alpha cell, we have glucagon. Insulin is secreted as a bosal, bolus basal pattern. And coming to the biosynthesis of insulin, it really occurs in three steps. That is pre-proinsulin is converted to pro-insulin and then it is converted to insulin and C-peptide. Pro-insulin generate the C-peptide and the A and B chains of the insulin. And C-peptide along with the uh, insulin are stored together and are co-secreted from the secretory granules of the beta cells. How does the secretion occur? Secretion, the trigger factor is the glucose for the release of the insulin. Glucose undergoes oxidation metabolism in beta cells to yield ATP. The receptor itself is a dimorphic complex of the sulfonylurea receptor and the potassium channel protein. Inhibition of this receptor leads to membrane depolarization, influx of calcium, and then there is a release of insulin from the beta cells. Insulin secretory profiles reveal a pulse light, pulsatile pattern. Every 10 minutes, we have a burst of insulin, which is superimposed by amplitude oscillations of about 80 to 150 minutes. This is a natural bolus basal, what we have got from the pancreas. Regulation of insulin secretion is mainly by chemical, hormonal, and neuronal mechanism. So let's see the factors which stimulate and which inhibit the insulin release which are stimulating our glucose, amino acid, free acids, parasympathetic uh, stimulation, and sulfonylurea drugs, which inhibit our decreased blood glucose, fasting, somatostatin, and leptin. 
What is the fate of insulin? Once we inject the insulin, which is released either by the pancreas or by the insulin, which is injected, once the insulin is secreted into the portal vein, 50% of it is degraded by the time it reaches the liver. Remaining insulin enters the circu uh, systemic circulation and it attaches to the receptors in the target sites, resulting in recruitment of IRS, resulting in widespread metabolic mitogenic effects of insulin. It's a peptide which gets degraded into GIT when given orally. What are the principles of action of insulin? They, they are rapid acting. They can have because of intracellular transport of glucose, amino acids, and ketone bodies into the insulin sensitive drugs uh, cells, which can occur in seconds. We have intermediate and delayed action of the insulin. What are the effects of insulin on target tissues? Let's see liver first. It decreases the gluconeogenesis, increases glycogen synthesis, increases lipogenesis. At muscle level, it increases the glucose uptake, increases glycogen synthesis and protein synthesis. At adipose tissue, it increases glucose uptake, increases lipogenesis and decreases lipolysis. I'll deal with its action on carbohydrate. Insulin stimulates glucose uptake by the cells. Insulin stimulates glycogenesis in both liver and skeletal muscles. It inhibits glycogenolysis. It inhibits gluconeogenesis. It promotes liver uptake, use and storage of insulin. Summary of action of insulin is that insulin promotes uptake of glucose, Insulin increases glycogenesis, lipogenesis, and protein formation. Insulin inhibits glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, lipolysis. It promotes growth. Now coming to the insulin profile and their actions. Now let's see the basal insulin and individual pharmacological profiles. Okay, now NPH onset is 2 to 4, peak 4 to 10 hours, duration is 10 to 16, but it is greater, it has got greater nocturnal hypoglycemia. Coming to glargine, 2 to 4 hours of onset, no peak, 20 to 24 hours once daily, but it has got variability four times more than the uh, detemer. Insulin detemer, 1 to 4 hours, no peak, 12 to 24 hours, once daily or twice daily. It is lower, lower. Coming to insulin degludec, onset is one to two hours, no peak. It, uh, duration of action is more than 42 hours and it can be given once daily. Now let's see the special population like pediatric, CKD, chronic liver disease, elderly and pregnancy. NPH can be used, including the glargine, ditemer, and recently degludec has got an upper of more than one year. In CKD and CLD, those adjustments are necessary with NPH. Insulin requires may, may be diminished with glargine. No effects on pharmacokinetics with degludec and ditemer. But with glargine, initial dosing, dose increments and maintenance doses to be very conservative. Pregnancy, most of these are B and C categories and some of them have got Indian label as no clinical experience. Coming to uh, bolus insulins, the hexamers, basically they act by converting the hexamers into dimers and into uh, monomers, where monomers have gotten very early diffusion, very rapid diffusion. Regular insulin, the bolus insulin has got 30 to 60 minutes of onset, peak at two to three years, uh, sorry, hours, and duration is three to six hours. Aspart, Lispro, and Glulicin, onset is less than 15 minutes, at a peak is between half to one and half hour and duration is two to four hours. 
Fast acting insulin aspart within five minutes we have got a quicker action, eleven minutes earlier, and ten percent lower late glucose lowering effect is there. Bolus insulin in special categories, age. I think most of them can be used in pediatrics now, except for glulisin, which can be used of more than six years. Of course, pediatric only. Dose reduction is recommended in CKD and CLD, but aspart has no effect on pharmacokinetics in CKD and CLD. More frequent dose adjustments are necessary with Lispro. Glulisin again, insulin requirements may be diminished. In CKD and CLD, and fast-acting insulin as part glucose monitoring is very necessary. Intensified glucose monitoring, pregnancy again category B in most of them, and glulisin is category C. These can be administered in hospital subcutaneously and intravenously. Coming to the premix insulin and co-formations. We have premix human insulin, which is thirty seventy. Again, onset is thirty to sixty minutes, peak two to eight hours, duration twenty four hours, and frequency could be OD or BD. We have got fifty fifty also combination here. Now coming to the biphasic as part, we have got thirty seventy and fifty fifty. Onset is less than fifteen minutes, peak one to four hours, and duration is. 24 because the protamin is used here with this biphasic lispro 75 25 50 50 combination again onset of is less than 15 minutes peak 1.3 hours duration is 12 to 24 hours coming to the deglodec as part less than 15 minutes 1.2 hour of onset it can last more than 24 hours then it can be given OD or BD. Premix insulin in special conditions. Premix insulin, human insulin, can be used in children and adults. And dose adjustments in CKD and CLD is very necessary. It can be used in elderly also with dose adjustment. Bias 3070 approved for more than 10 years. Dose reduction recommended in CKD. And in elderly, also it can be used. Biphasic Lispro information is still unavailable. Dose reduction is recommended in this CKD and CLD, and it can be used in elderly. Insulin Deglutec as part, it is approved for more than 18 years. I have been using this for more than 18 years of type 1 diabetes because it can you can give only one injection instead of basal and bolus in the night and it has no effect on pharmacokinetics and it can be used in elderly. Now what is the advantage of profiles of insulin with premix insulin analogs? It is simple to initiate lower injection burden. It can cover prandial and basal insulin requirements in a single injection and may be administered once, twice or thrice daily. It is best suited for individuals with predictable lifestyle and who consume regular meals every day. Coming to the concentrated insulin, uh, insulins, these are usually recommended for obese uh, uh, patients and who require very high doses units of insulin. We have five units insulin per ml in human, uh, regular insulin. We have 200 units per ml of humalog, 300 un units of insulin per ml of glargine, 200 units of insulin per ml of diglodec. So I think many are using this concentrated, but it is not proved in pediatrics, so I'm not using any of these concentrated insulins. To summarize, rapid acting insulin analogs can control postprandial hyperglycemia, Rapid onset, maximum peak, and short duration of action. Aspart is approved for use in broad range of population, including pediatric, pregnancy, geriatrics, and special condition. Intermediate and long-acting analogs.
can control fasting hyper, hyperglycemia relatively slow onset duration of action is more than 24 hours deglodec has got flat and stable glucose low, lowering profile premix analogs they can control fasting postprandial hyperglycemia with use of single device and lower numbers of pricks co formulation deglodec as part is a co formulation providing 24 hour coverage with no alteration in uh, pharmacokinetic parameters in chronic kidney or liver disease last two slides for me the future oral insulins were tried since last 90 years but it has got limitation because of the high harsh ph in the gi tract delivery challenges protease threat and absorption issues and lastly is the inhaled insulin this is one of the profile which was approved by us in 2014 and it is comes in a inhalation powder rapid acting insulin indicated to improve glycemic control in patients with type 1 diabetes must use with long acting insulin the disadvantage is it is available as single use cartridge of 4 units and 8 units some of the research showed that it is less effective in blood glucose lowering but it can be equivalent or lower risk of hypoglycemia which is a problem in type 1 diabetes so thank you thank you chairpersons and the team of diacare thank you